I've been a professional .NET developer since 2022. And in that time, I've written every single line of code in Visual Studio. Now, at the end of June, Microsoft made a pretty exciting announcement. And that is that there's a new dev kit for Visual Studio Code that promises to give us better integration for writing C Sharp in that IDE. So what I want to do in this video is explore, can we finally ditch Visual Studio in 2023 for this new VS Code extension and dev kit combined? Stick around to find out my opinions. Now, before we get to the good stuff, I have to do the classic maintenance job. The first of which is a welcome for newcomers. If this is the first time that you've come across my channel, then my name is John and I release a video every single Sunday, mainly focused on C Sharp, that'll make you a better developer. So hit subscribe now before you regret it. Secondly, as always, there is a related tutorial which goes through everything about C in this video, which can be found linked to below. So with that said and done, let's review the C Sharp Dev Kit. The first task is to install this dev kit. And we do that by going to the Visual Studio Code Marketplace, just like any other extension. Now, the things you'll need to make sure you have installed are first and foremost, the classic c -sharp package, which has been around for ages. Now, the next bit you'll need to install is the c -sharp dev kit. Now, one thing that's probably worth shouting about is that at the time of recording, c -sharp dev kit is still in beta. And this is the reason why we have the preview badge here. So I guess in the future, this extension may change. However, for 2023, what you see in this video is what you get. Now, as a complement to C Sharp Dev Kit, you should also install IntelliCode for C Sharp Dev Kit. This is going to give you a better IntelliSense in Visual Studio Code when you're working with C Sharp. Now, before I get to the review, it's probably worth talking about licensing because sadly, C Sharp Dev Kit is not a free tool. So C Sharp Dev Kit builds upon the same foundation as the Visual Studio license. So this means it's free for individuals, academia and open source development. However, if you're in an organization and you have over five people, you're going to need to have a Visual Studio professional license minimum. So I think this is an important one to point out that in terms of costs, it's exactly the same as Visual Studio. So it's no better or no worse. So after we've installed the C Sharp Dev Kit and the IntelliCode, what will happen is that once we go to our Explorer, you'll see that we have a brand new button called Create.NET Project. Clicking on this, you can basically create a brand new project. Ooh. And you'll see that you get a list of all the .NET projects in the top here, and you can pick, you know, I want to create a Razor class library or a web API or whatever it might be. It's also worth pointing out that as well as being able to do things via the UI, you also have a number of command palette options. So you'll see that we can create a new project from here. We can do a build and we've got loads of other bits and bobs that we'll get to later on in the video. Now, at first glance, this might look exactly the same as Visual Studio. However, there is a quirk. So if we look through all of my different installed templates here, you can see that I've got MS test, NUnit, Razor, a bunch of good stuff. However, if I actually go to a command prompt and then type in .NET new list, you'll see that I do a lot of Umbraco development and I have my Umbraco template in here. However, these templates are not appearing inside Visual Studio Code, so it only gives you a subset of all of the installed .NET templates that you have on your machine. So this is definitely something to be aware of. Okay, so we've now created ourselves a solution. And the really good thing is, is that C Sharp Dev Kit will actually create the solution file for you rather than you have to create it manually, which is what it was like before. Now, after we've created our project, you'll see that C Sharp Dev Kit gives us a brand new pane over in our Explorer. And once we open it up here, we have a view which is quite similar to Visual Studio. And from here, we can do things like right click on it, do a build, do a rebuild, do a clean. We can create new projects, add existing projects, all of that good stuff. 
Now expanding on my project, you can see that I can view my dependencies so I can see all the different NuGet packages which are available within my project. It's also probably worth pointing out that you don't lose access to your existing solution view. So up the top here, you can see that I've got my normal classic VS Code viewer. And if I right click on things, you can see from here, I don't have that build and rebuild. However, I do have all the existing stuff they expect and come to love from Visual Studio Code. So in essence, with this new extension installed, when you're doing c -sharp work, you'll probably find yourself using the Solution Explorer and you'll end up minimizing the old tab for the majority of your time. I quickly jumped into Visual Studio and loaded exactly the same project. And in it, you can see that I've got a test project. And if I right click on, say, one of my unit tests within my test projects, you can see that I've got the option to run my tests and debug my tests. Now, if I switch back to my Visual Studio, you'll see that I've got the same test project here. However, this time, if I right click on that, I don't have the option to run my tests from the context menu. However, if I actually open the file, you can see on the left hand side here, I've got a green tick because my unit test passed. And if I click on it, I can actually trigger off that unit test from inside Visual Studio Code. So while we don't have a like for like capability and Visual Studio is a little bit better, you can still pretty much do everything you need to do now in Visual Studio Code. Now, the next thing that I'd like to point out is all around package management because I think this is lacking quite a lot. Now, if I go to my solution, I can do my manage NuGet packages and I get a NuGet Explorer. So from here, I can search my NuGet packages. I can see what's installed. I can see what's outdated. I can click on things. I can see which projects things are installed on. And we don't have any equivalent in VS Code whatsoever. Now, obviously, it's still possible to work with NuGet packages just through the terminal. So we can head over to NuGet.org. We could do something like search for a unit test project. We can click on it and then we can get the installation command right here. Now, this is all fine and dandy. However, what happens if you're working in a project that uses multiple sources for NuGet? Now, for example, Optimizely CMS has its own NuGet package repository. And the good thing about using Visual Studio is that it will allow you to browse multiple repositories through that explorer. Where if we're doing it just through a website, we might have to have multiple tabs open just to find what we need. And for me personally, not having a NuGet package explorer is a big deal breaker. So hopefully in the future, this comes along. But for now, Visual Studio wins by far. So far, it probably sounds like I've been bashing this extension a lot. However, just for some simple development, it does a pretty good job. So let's say that, you know, we're in our folder. We now want to create a new file. We can create classes, enums, all that kind of good templatey stuff you'd expect. Now, if I just do my class of like dummy class, and as you would expect, the class got created with all the correct syntax. Now, when it comes to creating code, as you'll see, you do get IntelliSense thanks to the IntelliSense version. So we can add in our constructor here. Everything is magical. Now, one thing that I was really interested in trying out was let's see how it actually works in terms of updates and refactoring. So if I update this test method, if I do rename symbol, what happens if I call this updated dummy? So the first thing you'll notice is the class has now been refactored with the updated name. If we go back to our original POCO, our class here, you can see that it's also been updated here. And if we click on this, we also have options of refactoring. So we can rename file to updated dummy. Boom. So I'd say all in all, the refactoring and the updating of references and additional files works pretty well, except for in one circumstance. Okay, so I've quickly jumped into another project and let's try creating a view now. So if I click in my views folder, click create file. Now, one issue is we can do a MVC view import. I don't want to do that or a view start. Again, I don't want to do that. I can create a Razor component or a Razor page. Now, I just want to create a normal view. So if I do say Razor page, this is going to create me a CSHTML file, which is all great and dandy. However, as you can see here, 
it's also coming with the code behind so we've got a c sharp file as well and in my example i'm just creating an umbraco website and i don't need this extra class here which is a bit annoying now the other thing you can see is it's now got my app dot namespace and whenever you create a new view for some reason instead of using the project namespace which you can see on screen it definitely has been set it seems to use this default namespace which is annoying now i'm not going to go into all the quirks when it comes to views because there's some weird things like creating two razor pages in the same folder creates errors and you can't rename things however in general when it comes to views things are not quite right yet hopefully this will change in the future however it's again it's another little caveat of why you might want to stick with visual studio as i was writing code i did notice a few other things which are worth pointing out so just in terms of you know your usings need refactoring this all works really well. However, one another annoyance is that when we try and do a build, I don't have the option of which environment I want to work with. So yeah, I can do debug and I can start a brand new instance now. I can start without debugging, I can build. However, let's say that I've got different environment variables that I want to do. So let's say I wanna do a publish build and see what that looks like. From here, I don't have any options. Now, again, if I switch to Visual Studio, you can see here that I can switch between debug, release, all my different configuration manager stuff here. Now, aside from the simple act of switching between different environments, what happens if I want to do a publish rather than a build? So creating a publish bundle in Visual Studio, super simple. I right click on my project, select the publish option, which is right here. And then this is going to launch a wizard. And from here, I can decide if I'm going to publish to Azure, to Docker, to FTP, and I've got loads of different options. And when we compare this functionality to what we get in Visual Studio Code, you'll see that when I right click on it, we have no publish option whatsoever. And it's left to you to basically come up with your own publish profile and figure everything out within config, which is definitely a pain in the bottom. So just in terms of normal day to day debugging, publishing code to production, all of that kind of classic good stuff. Again, Visual Studio hands down wins here as well. Finally, I think the last nail in the coffin of why we can't switch over to VS Code full time comes with the extensions. Now, granted, Visual Studio Code has thousands, millions maybe of extensions. Now, just in terms of the Visual Studio extension that I use personally, I have created a video of the best ones. So if you're interested in learning about the full list, check out that video link to below. However, some of the things that are worth pointing out quickly include CodeMade, Reattach, and obviously the king daddy of the Visual Studio extensions, ReSharper. <laughs> So in a perfect world, I think ideally I'd like to use one single IDE. However, I think as this review of C Sharp Dev Kit has kind of proven that at the moment C Sharp in VS Code just isn't quite up to scratch. And if you're a professional C Sharp developer, you're going to be sticking with Visual Studio, especially when you think the cost is exactly the same for companies with over six developers. Now, this brings us to the not really surprising conclusion of the video. If you have enjoyed it, then don't forget to click subscribe because I'm always releasing new C Sharp related videos. Also, click on like if you want to do me a massive favor, if you've got value from this video, because I do appreciate it. Now, if you are a C Sharp fanboy and you'd like to learn more about what's coming in .NET 8, I've recorded a video all about it. The link is on the screen right now, so click on that. Otherwise, I hope you're having a great time wherever you are in this world. And until next Sunday, happy coding.